Welcome to CounterPoint. I'm Tanya Granick allen For several years now, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has made it clear that he wants to tighten restrictions and ban some firearms. It was only a matter of time and sorting out the when and the how. Gun control is an intense debate that countries all over the world have wrestled with, and plenty of motion runs high on both sides. This is why we have a parliament to act as a sounding board. But with the COVID-19 pandemic, Parliament and many of its procedures have gone by the wayside and this Prime Minister chose to pass rifle bans without debate and discussion. In the aftermath of the unfathomable and devastating tragedy that happened in Nova Scotia, we have to ask ourselves, is Canada banning certain firearms because this will reduce gun crime? Or is this just an emotional knee-jerk reaction that could have large and unintended consequences? Angus Reid published a poll saying that 80% of Canadians support a ban on assault rifles. The problem, though, most Canadians don't even know what a military-style assault rifle is, and the poll's own data shows that half of the respondents aren't even familiar or completely unaware of existing gun laws in Canada. This points to a problem that Canadians don't even understand the laws and don't realize how restrictive gun laws currently are compared to many jurisdictions in the world. The hunting and firearms industry also generates $5.9 billion a year here in Canada and employs over 48,000 people. The government's own impact report admits that they have no idea how this ban will impact businesses or jobs. But the most important question is how, if anything, will the ban affect gun crime and homicide rates in the country? Based on news reports about Nova, the Nova Scotia shooting, it does not sound like the Liberal gun ban would have had any impact. The shooter wasn't licensed. He acquired his guns illegally, including ones from the United States. Canada already has a fairly low rate of gun violence and has one of the more restrictive gun control regimes. Yet in Canada, one third of homicides involve a gun. But the vast majority of these are handguns and mostly, again, illegally obtained, including guns brought in from the United States. Therefore, is the Prime Minister taking advantage of heightened emotions to push an ideological agenda? Will the rifle ban have an impact on gun violence in Canada? What will happen to the hunting and shooting industries and the jobs they support? Joining me today is Charles Zach with the National Firearms Association. Thank you for joining me today, Charles. Hi, Tanya. Glad to be here. Excellent. So Canada has just experienced the worst uh, mass lone shooter uh, massacre in the country uh, in our history. And of course, um, we're still investigating the RCMP are still kind of unpackaging what exactly happened there. Um, but a lot of people are, are, are co commenting that the Liberal government here, led by Justin Trudeau, is using this as an opportunity to push through this order in council at this time when we're in a COVID pandemic, to push through his um, long-awaited uh, you know, rifle ban or gun ban, if you will, it, rather than going through the appropriate means through, through Parliament. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Well, first off, I'd just like to say on behalf of uh, the law-abiding firearms community of Canada that, that we are also deeply affected, you know, by this this tragedy and the tragedies that have happened in the past and the ongoing gun violence that is happening in the urban centres like Toronto and across the country. Um, and you're right, the Liberals have once again been very opportun opportunistic and are now playing on the fears of the public to uh, advance their agenda, a well-known agenda of civil disarmament. This is not about um, banning guns because they're dangerous. Um, we've seen this happen before back in 1995 where many guns have already been banned. Um, the so-called military style assault rifles were banned back then and smaller pistols and things like that. And yet, despite all that regulation and bad law basically, uh, the the carnage and the criminal crime violence continues. What that says is that gun control is a failure. And yet the Liberals continue to scapegoat law-abiding Canadians and demonize us and treat us with um, with the prejudice under the law as well. And because they, they're not addressing the real problem. We believe so, that, go ahead. Okay, so what, what percentage of Canadians or how many guns are legally owned firearms are there in Canada? So there on the books, there is about uh, 2.1 million Canadian law-abiding gun owners. I can tell you that it, it it's it's much higher than that. It's probably in the realm of five to six thousand or five to five to six million. Uh, back in 1995, 
they uh, they brought on C68, and uh, it's the same as it was now, where you have to comply. Most people did not, right? So the government basically just cut it off at that point. Whatever they harvested at that point in time in terms of registration and new licenses, that became the new number. But that was not the number of the population out there that have firearms. Okay. Now, um, just for, for those who may not be familiar, in order to acquire a, uh, a, a firearm in Canada, one needs to go through the PAL program, which is you need a, a possession and acquisition license. Yes. And you have to go through a whole course and you have to, you know, background checks, uh, all sorts of things, see if there are any fly- red flags. Um, getting back to the Nova Scotia uh, lone shooter massacre, he was not legally, he, none of the weapons he used were legally obtained. In fact, according to the Globe and Mail, from what I read, um, all, all of his rifles came from America and uh, the handgun he acquired also illegally in Canada. So uh, all the weapons, he was not only not a permitted because of prior conviction to actually um, use firearms or obtain firearms, everything he used was obtained illegally. Uh, so I, I'm thinking about this, would this liberal rifle ban then actually help in this kind of circumstance or in future tragedies? And, and the short answer to that is no. This is not about crime control or preventing future violence. Um, honestly, this is nothing more than more vote pandering. Um, the Trude- Trudeau Liberals are probably m- going to be calling a, an election pretty soon, and they'll make this into a an election plank to hopefully propel them into a majority government next time. Um, these measures haven't worked in the past, and they're not going to work this time as well, too. And it's not my personal opinion. We now have empirical evidence over the course of the last 25, 30 years now from reputable um, uh, social scientists out there that say that gun control does not prevent this kind of, of of harm to the public, and it's not about public safety. Now, in doing uh, some research, just preparing for this interview, I did uh, notice that in the UK, for example, they did um, institute some, uh, I think it was anything above a 22 caliber rifle ban. Yes. And, um, and then they did see, they actually did see a reduction in uh, firearms-related crime. However, it seemed that there was then the the actual overall homicide rate, rate rate however did not decline because people just used other weapons for example like machetes or, or there was actually a spike in, in in knife and crime and and bombings and whatnot so i can i can understand i can appreciate your perspective so um or your 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 comments there on gun bans and rifle bans not really helping with the crime rate that being said um in canada because we have such a close proximity to the united states and you know, we've seen, and especially in the last few years, that we really have quite a porous border. And knowing that in Nova Scotia, for example, the lone shooter acquired, uh, brought his rifles illegally across the border. Um, do you think the government will, even with any measure, would be able to keep these types of, of rifles out of the hands of criminals in Canada? Well, you know, the the uh, this is really an economic question, right? We're talking about supply and demand. Canada has a long history of we, we are a gun culture, you know, many families, including my own, you know, we were hunting, shooting from a young age, and this goes back to generations. And to claim that Canada is not a gun culture is false. Our history shows that, that we are a gun culture. Now, as you said, we sit on top of the greatest firearms arsenal in the world. And like you said, our border is very porous. And We've been so we've been fighting the war on drugs, for instance, for 50 years now, and unfortunately, we we barely make a dent in that as well too, because our border just doesn't allow for us to 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 wall it down and stop that kind of contraband c- coming across the country. So, if we were to ban all guns in Canada, eventually, what will happen is that the demand will still be there, especially from criminals, but also normal citizens out there who want to use them for pest control for hunting or target shooting, there is that demand. And if they're not doing harm, why not? Um, that demand will go gray into the black market and those guns will come up here. And you know what? It'll be a worse situation because it won't be regulated guns coming across. There'll, there there will be real military type firearms coming across the border and then plowing into our society. Because correct me if I'm wrong, but presently, for like fully automatic assault rifles are completely, uh, you're not a permitted to obtain them whatsoever as restricted or unrestricted items in Canada. Is that correct? That's correct. Back in, so, uh, back in 19, uh, back in the seventies, actually under C51, all 
military assault rifles were pretty much banned. Okay, we're talking about the machine guns and submachine guns that fired, you know, select fire or automatic. There's no such thing that, that that's not in the hands of the public right now. Only the military have them, and of course, some of the uh, you know the special um, police forces out there that do tactical SWAT um, uh, type of operations. Right. So I found it interesting when I was looking through this order and council that, that Trudeau uh, brought through today, uh, you know, his rifle ban or what, what, what have you, uh, that he referred to these as, and I quote, military assault weapons, <laughs> um, which I found interesting. And he said, and I'm looking down reading this, these weapons have one and one only purpose, to kill the largest number of people in the shortest amount of time, uh, which I found was a fallacy because... I mean, really, it's fully automatic and, and large magazines that would, would accomplish such things. I'm only saying this because I've done this research today, and again, in preparation for this interview, and I found out that actually we don't have fully automatic, as I mentioned, rifles from it in Canada. And there's also restriction on clip size. I think it's five, five uh, yes. in, a, in, our, in a semi-automatic uh, rifle, which is, which is allowed in Canada as sure. a restricted item. True. And so these kinds of guns, say the semi-automatic or even a handgun, where is a Canadian legally allowed who's a, who's obtained illegally uh, these weapons illegally? Where are these these rifles illegally? Legally, legally rather, where are they permitted to legally discharge these items? So um, let's use the AR-15 as an example. So it's been deemed as banned. Uh, previous to that, it was restricted, meaning that you could only use this particular type of gun, the AR-15, at a uh, certified gun range. So I have several AR-15s that are not going to be collecting dust for a while, but um, you could only use those particular rifles at that range. There's some ranges that would not allow you to use that kind of gun, and you can't use it there. So when I want to take it there, there has to be a uh, um, basically a, a transfer permit for me to take it there and bring it back so that the police know that I'm taking it there, and that's all registered at, at, the, uh, at the range. Now, when I was looking through, again, this order, um, I found it interesting uh, that he, the Liberals also said that these weapons are not suitable for shooting, sports shooting or hunting, which I thought was kind of broad-based because you've obviously just mentioned that you do use it for those things. Um, but I found it also interesting to note that they put an exemption order that allows the Indigenous communities to continue hunting with these weapons during this two-year proposed amnesty period. It made me question why, if the government is so keen on, on uh, banning these these rifles for for hunting or that they're bad for hunting, why you permit this community to continue to use them for two years even? Well, once again, you, you've you hit it right on the nail. It's, um, you know, the way they selected these firearms is very arbitrary. And, um, you know, they they had a rationale at the bottom of the the, the Canada magazine that described their in uh, why they did this, but there's no empirical evidence there to show that any of these guns that they've picked out will actually have any impact on public safety. Now, let me just talk to the, you know, these firearms is for use for hunting, for instance. They are being used for hunting. Many many of those guns, they're just semi-automatic rifles. You know, they may look paramilitary, but when you pull that trigger once, um, a certain uh, caliber bullet comes out, a 308 or a 223. Those are certain bullets that are are designed for for hunting. Um, I personally use a 30 odd six, so a 308 or something like that would be perfect for, say, moose. I know many people that use some of the, the firearms that are on that list right now, uh, they were using that for deer hunting, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, you know the, you know the the, uh, the Ruger Mini that they they banned as well too. That's a, a popular coyote uh, gun and a predator gun. When you have you know people out west that are defending their their livestock, they usually have that in the tractor or in the truck or something like that. It's a quick and easy tool to dispatch a threat. And um, a lot of Canadians may not be aware, but the hunting and shooting industry is a $5.9 billion a year industry and employs 48,000 people. So there are quite a few hunters in Canada who probably do use these these rifles uh, for, like, as you indicated, for hunting and, and shooting as well, like target shooting. So I like, are the Liberals, have they done any uh, fiscal um, uh, studies to see what the impact will be even on, on the, the hunting industry? Because again, you know, not every place in Canada is an urban center. and People do actually leave their urban centers to go hunt and live in rural communities where they do hunt actively. Well, let, let me speak to the costing part of this. And they've come out with a costing. I can tell you that it's low-balled. They, they've cited a, a cost of something like $600 million. That is astronomically low. We are estimating it to be in the 8 to $10 billion range. 
Okay. So, and I can also tell you, it's not the hunters that are being primarily affected here. It's the sports shooters. There's many hunters out there that maybe have one or two firearms and maybe fire off a box of, 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 you know, uh, ammunition a year. Sports shooters buy many guns and they, and they buy lots of ammunition with, with accessories. They're the real driving force behind the, um, the gun industry in Canada at the retail level and at the user level as well, too. So, you know, let's not get into the, um, you know, the divide and conquer um, narrative of the liberals where they're saying, well, the, you know, the hunters are ones, you know, it's OK for them. But the sport shooters, you know, are, are not economically. It's the sport shooters, you know, that are the primary drivers of the economy in this particular industry. So I'm um, getting back to um what I believe was the impetus in sort of bringing this legislation now, which was we just experienced a, a very violent crime here in Canada. I mean, ultimately, Canadians, they do not want to see violence. Most Canadians, I think all Canadians do not want violence. However, if um, what we've discussed here suggests that uh, banning certain rifles and certain weapons and certain guns does not lead to reduction in violent crime, um, then, then why are we doing this? And then what should be done? What measures should be taken instead? to help prevent uh, this kind of violence, crime in future. You're absolutely right. You know, so the, you know, these measures haven't had a, an effect in the past and they won't have an effect in the future. And I actually posed this at the uh, the, the post announcement scrum, you know, um, I, you know, asked them for, for evidence to show how this is going to play out and how, it, you know, you know, give me the evidence on, you know, how you actually made these laws and whether or not they had any mechanism to actually measure them in terms of efficacy in the future. Is it going to have an effect on public safety? If it doesn't, then it should be adjusted or repealed. They had no answer. This has just been punted out there, and they're going to run with it. And I guess it's the ideal opportunity when you can pretty much declare whatever you would like law with very limited legislative, very limited uh, MP sitting right now to have the proper vetting procedure as as normally one would in the House of Commons. So I guess we're going to have to see how this is going to play out, and uh, you know what really uh, practically this this rifle ban will look like. Um, listen, Charles, thank you so much for joining me today. You've given some excellent information. And um, I guess we'll be in touch as maybe in the future as, as we see what more develops on this legislation front. Anytime, Tanya. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Canada suffered the worst gun massacre in history this past month in Nova Scotia with 22 victims. Coast to coast, Canadians are mourning. Canadians don't want violence. No one does. But it does not seem clear that banning certain types of rifles from law-abiding citizens will actually achieve that end. And certainly, any attempt to regulate firearms ought to go through proper legislative procedure and not happen at a time when emotions are running high as we bury the victims of this heinous event. The focus should be on measures that will stop criminal gun violence. And just like the criminal shooter in Nova Scotia, most criminals illegally obtain guns, many of which are smuggled to Canada from the United States and elsewhere. So again, I ask, is Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's new rifle ban really about reducing gun crime? Or is this just a gun grab, plain and simple? For CounterPoint, I'm Tanya Granik-Allen.